All right. If you would, how'd this morning go? I wasn't there, so how did it go? Thumbs up, thumbs middle, thumbs down. We liked it. How did this morning go? It was as expected. Hmm. Since you guys are loath to give me details, take 30 seconds and talk with your shoulder partner about one thing you thought was important about what was what was discussed this morning. Go. Volunteers to bring me up to speed on what happened this morning and what you thought was important. We can do this by a show of hands. Volunteers. Two. One. Yeah. Go ahead. Start? Yes, please. We talked about... Um, they usually revisit what we talked about the time before, mm -hmm. or even the two times before. Um, it's not like the focus was more about positioning kids for success. Um, they come in already kind of like with knowing what their status in the class is, like I'm smart, I'm good with math, or I'm bad with math, and trying to give every kid an entry point and give them a, a voice in your room rather than keep reinforcing what they already think about themselves. So it was a lot of like theory and things. Mm -hmm. um, in previous times, we've had times where they pull uh, the group into like three different groups and do like a mini lesson. We haven't done that the last few times. Okay. I kind of missed that a little bit. Because they were doing like, it was splat. They were doing the first couple uh, times yeah, I was here, things like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We haven't done that in the last two times, I don't think. Okay. Which has been kind of, I'm assuming people will talk about that and maybe we'll do it next time. That's what I'm By all means, give your feedback, absolutely, because they appreciate that kind of thing. So, Anybody else? Something that you thought was important? Any other thoughts before we move on to our No? Well, thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate you sharing. Um, <clears throat> I, the purpose is the same as it's always been. We're here to talk about visual algebra, visual mathematics, because at the end of the day, high school mathematics has to be more than the intensive study of the last three letters of the alphabet. And so we're going to work on today specifically algebra tiles. And no, I'm not going to talk at you the whole time, actually. That, that just bores me to death and bores you to death even worse. So what Mike and I have devised is a uh, <clears throat> basically a stations activity for you guys to do today where you're going to explore some uh, algebra tiles and representations. Who, who has used algebra tiles in their classroom? OK, take note of the people who have used algebra tiles in their classroom. I would argue that every hand in the room should be up at some point, and, and I'll, I'll make the case as to why here shortly. Um, those are the standard outcomes from before. We're going to do a little bit of math today, but we're going to do it with algebra tiles as opposed to the way we're used to doing it. And I do want, for just a minute, <clears throat> to have the middle school group from last time who did the tape diagrams reflect on what happened and consider what the high school group might need to know. If middle school is using tape diagrams, what a high school teachers need to know that the students are coming in with the kinds of knowledge. We're going to talk about the CRA progression as a tool for helping students move forward. Who's familiar with CRA if I say that without having to explain what it is? Anybody? No? Okay, good. Then we're going to have some fun. We're going to do some algebra tile stations, and then we're going to talk about how algebra tiles are the beginning, not the end, of anything in particular that you might be doing. And then, of course, your implementation guide, as Rusty and, and Marcus and Andrew are always pushing us to do. What questions might you have thus far? I 
I'm just that good at explaining, huh? Awesome. That's all right. So, high school teachers in the room, please reflect on what you might have done differently in your classroom since you began this uh, this this journey, and then how have your students responded to those changes? Middle school teachers in the room, please reflect on what you learned about using tape diagrams to solve equations. How have your students responded if you've used them in the classroom? And then, of course, the important thing is what should high school teachers know about your students' experiences as they come to them? Uh, let's take five minutes for that reflection before we solidify something. You don't have to be. Just if you don't have a, a high school partner around, you might want to find one. Five seconds, two and a half seconds, one and three-eighths seconds. Yes. All right. Um, for anybody who was not here last week, I do have extra copies of the tape diagram worksheet if you guys would want them. If the high school teachers want them, I have extra copies for you guys as well. But middle school teachers who were in the room last week, talk to us about tape diagrams very quickly. What in the heck is a tape diagram? Do I have a picture of one? I do, right here. Would you like well, some? Yeah, I have that. You have I mean, that? So people can see it. Yeah, this is this is a tape diagram right here. I don't have one to put up on the screen, no. If you guys want them, take them and pass them around. You you may absolutely. Kind of that open middled idea is you get the choice of how you want to solve the problem. We're going to get the same answer in the end, but yeah. Has anybody used them in their classroom? How did you use them? Um, my students just did it yesterday, <laughs> day before. Um, we're using it for my sixth grade students for ratios. Um, with the curriculum that I'm using, we go from double number lines mm -hmm. to tables. Um, talk about finding the unit rates as well as in that, and then now we are using it um, for ratios. Yeah, so there's three different representations, and so students can kind of choose which one they want to use. Um, and it's just the same representation, just different visual ways of doing it. Mm -hmm. so. And one of those visuals is a tape diagram. Yes. Yeah. It's the last one that we're writing. We're almost done. Hmm. And it's interesting how the tape diagram also works in addition to um, ratios and proportions. It also works for algebra as well. Excellent. Anybody else? We, at my old district, we call it bar modeling. It's the same idea. Mm -hmm. And we had a curriculum that we had from K-8. And so starting like in kindergarten and like younger grades, they start doing simple bar models, except it doesn't always give them this. It gives them like a word problem, and they have to create the bar model for it. And then the more advanced is like after they feel comfortable with making it, then it gives them a random like bar model and they have to make the problem, like write the word problem for it. And so they, those kids are very good at it by the time I was a fifth grade teacher because they've seen it for so many years that they became very good at taking a word problem and making a tape diagram for it or a bar model for it and you have to solve it. But that was after, you know, five years of repetition. <laughs> Other? Yes, sir. Um, I, I took uh, like the simplest um, tape one diagram on here because um, my eighth grade class, we'd run study patterns. Mm -hmm. They'd work with the tiles and some mats, and then they find out which ones are greater, and then they start doing some simple, uh, simplification of variables. And then I put um, one of these on for a warm up because I do a warm up every day. Mm -hmm. And so then it kind of led into their solving a linear equation before I actually get to that unit. So I want to put up a few, um, you know, every month until we get to that. 
chapter four when they actually start getting to linear equations and it tied in nicely because um, we were writing equations before we even get there. Mm -hmm. And your students seem to experience success with the representation? Yeah, because they're so used, used to all the visuals that we've been doing with all the maps and the mm -hmm. patterns that when I put this up, it's more, they were eager, um, eighth grade anyway, um, for a, a mini challenge to them, I think. And they were eager and most of them were diving into it. I am sure with their own partner that outside of class and then me kind of wrote an equation together, but you always have kids that are writing equation for you. I always just putting the equation on the board. Hmm. Nice. Other thoughts? High school teachers, you deal in <coughs> solving equations. Is there a preferred method that you have that you want students to do, or are there multiple methods? If so, what are they? Just curious. Thoughts on that? I'll second that. I've had students, they will they'll show me, is this correct? And they'll just have an answer. And I'll say, oh, how'd you get that answer? And then as soon as the words start flowing out of their mouths, I say, stop. Whatever you're about to say, that's what I want you to write down. <laughs> that's, how you, that's how I want you to communicate to me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm getting across, just like they communicate in English with words, we need that communication in mathematics as well. Mm -hmm. But they got to write it. That's a challenge, isn't it? To get them to show their thoughts somehow, whether it's in words, because most of them don't want to write words because that's too much like English class, and we can't have that in math. That would be just be bad. Can I explain that? That's, I said, math is for lazy people. <laughs> <laughs> so we have this math study, so you don't have to write math equals. All right, that's a long thing. Just put two lines. Mm -hmm. math, <laughs> math, mathematicians are lazy. It's true. Uh, we, we I disagree. Mathematicians are efficient. Yeah, there we go. There we go. We can. They, they, the efficiency um, uh, is enabled by their laziness. But yes, absolutely. They're, 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 they will say it's efficiency. Absolutely. <laughs> Other thoughts? What I'm trying to get at here is if your middle school teachers engage students with experiences like this, how does that change what you might see when students come to you as a high school teacher? You don't have to answer that, but that's something you need to think about and something you have to be prepared to deal with. All right, so let's talk about CRA for just a minute here. So CRA actually stands for that, Concrete Representational Abstract. Um, <clears throat> no, I'm, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pose this as a tool that I keep in my back pocket for thinking about differentiation with students. It is not a hard and fast rule because there are going to be a lot of people who are going to say, yeah, but it doesn't, okay. No, it's not going to work for everybody. However, it helps us, it helps me anyway, make instructional decisions about a student who's having some difficulties. Rather than simply simplifying the mathematics for them, I might step back in this progression and say, okay, well, let's talk about drawing a picture of this, or let's talk about pulling out some manipulatives and using this to solve this problem, as opposed to just, oh, you can't do a two-step equation, so we better ratchet it back to a one-step equation because you don't get it yet. Before you do something like that, stepping along this using manipulatives to using drawings to using variables. The, the challenge is that last bullet. There's some evidence to suggest that that is true. Possibly 60% of students enter high school operating at the concrete level. 
which means they still need things to manipulate to understand the mathematics. And what do we hit them with traditionally right away? Yeah, we're way at the other end, right? We're way at the other end. We're at the abstract end. So the question becomes, what are some tools that we might be able to use with students to help students think? Because these tools are not ends of themselves. They are things that help students think about what we want them to think about. And one of those tools is algebra tiles. For those of you who use algebra tiles in your classroom, I apologize. Today might be um, somewhat review for you, but the good news is you have choice in what's going to happen today. Anybody got any questions before we... Has anybody heard of this kind of trajectory idea at all? Yeah? Okay. Something to hold in your back pocket. What's going to happen today is the, rather than me telling you how to use algebra tiles and then having you practice it, I'm just going to set you loose on a bunch of them. So you get choice today in what you do. There are five stations spread around the room. Each of them has a paper. Equivalent expressions is right there. The distributive property and factoring is right over there. The solving equations, I'm sorry, solving equations is right there. I apologize. Everybody, yeah, hold up this piece of paper and set your table <laughs> just so I can remember where I put everything. Because I did, I did change the, uh, so equivalent expressions, solving equations, distributive property and factoring, binomial and trinomial multiplication factoring, and then completing the square in the middle, of, in the middle table. And this is going to be a rotating stations activity. I'm going to give you guys 15 minutes at every station. You have to choose at least three to go to over the course of the next 45 minutes. If you're a middle school teacher, I might suggest doing the first three. If you're a high school teacher, I might suggest doing the last three. Just a thought. I've kind of structured them that way. At every table, there are two copies of a series of tasks for you to engage in using the algebra tiles. And there is a series of mats that you can use to structure the algebra tiles on, along with two sets of algebra tiles that would work two people apiece. And last, but certainly not least, I've included recording sheets, because here's the catch. This is about learning how to use algebra tiles, but I also want you to have something to take with you about algebra tiles. And so modeling these things and actually writing down what you've modeled with the algebra tiles is the, is the last step in this process. And of course, the last step of the process is also in your own challenge to solve this. Okay? So everybody needs to choose right now where they would like to begin out of those five and the three they would like to go to. Think carefully. As you, <clears throat> excuse me, as you finish thinking, feel free to chat at your table about the answers to those questions.
finish up your conversations in the next 20 seconds, please. Ten seconds. Five seconds. All right. What are your thoughts? What struck you as important enough in your group to share with the whole group? In a jump. Fast, it was know, a jump, yeah. Like the end, the loss, right? <coughs> so I think if we had the uh, concrete mm -hmm. with the abstract in mind, that might be easy. It's an interesting hypothesis. These are not traditional algebra tiles, ironically enough. Traditional algebra tiles typically don't have the labels on them, mm -hmm. which I've always found kind of annoying, too. Other thoughts? Yeah, I'm going to know. They're, these are not mine. They're Mike's, so please don't steal any. <laughs> I was going to say, is the, there's a raffle for people that <laughs> to get them. I think he might be mad at me if I gave them all away. We didn't talk about it here, but when we were over at the expression table and the subtracting of the expressions, mm -hmm. that we said that, that using the algebra tiles, because at least my seventh graders won't know to distribute the, the subtraction of the negative sign. Mm -hmm actually ended up being more abstract <laughs> than almost manipulating the numbers themselves. Say more about that. Why, why do you think that is? Why would it because you were having to add zero pairs so that you could subtract. It's hard enough to, because they're used to combining things, and so they're throwing mm -hmm. them together, and what do I end up with? That's mm -hmm. okay. But the whole idea of I have to take the quantity that's in the second parenthesis away from the quantity that's in the first. Mm -hmm. I mean, that in itself is a little bit different because we're not throwing it together anymore. But then when it subtracts and then in parentheses there's a negative, mm -hmm. it just, you had to really think hard about <coughs> what do I do with the x's in terms of the zero pairs so that mm -hmm. I can get rid of. And then what do I do with the constants? Hmm. Subtracting, <laughs> subtracting a negative is always the tricky one because it's, no matter what context you use, it's difficult to make sense of that for students. And I don't know that this is any better or worse than any other one. You look like you have a follow-up on this? Yeah, because the other child that I had had two sides. So mm -hmm. one side positive, one side negative. Mm -hmm. So if you have a negative, you put it over, right? So when you go picking the parentheses, I use plastic bags. <coughs> put a plastic bag, right? There's not a possible negative, but then you have to put the whole plastic bag on it. Put the whole plastic bag on it, you see the way you start to change colors. And I like that better than these separate positives and negatives. Just my mm -hmm. There are multiple ways to think about this, absolutely. One last thought before I set you guys loose here, because we're just about done. Where do they fall, is my question, in students' lives? In the, like, if you, if you pick a given topic, say solving equations, where, where do algebra tiles have a role? All the way through? Forever? Yes, sir? Representational? Mm -hmm. 
And the point is you don't want to hang around on algebra tiles forever, right? Eventually you want to transition kids off of them because our ultimate goal is for kids to be able to do abstract work. And that was the challenge of this question is how would you do it? How would you, like the, the number one complaint I hear from elementary school teachers about using manipulatives is, well, yeah, but then the kids need them all the time. How could you deliberately transition kids off of using algebra tiles? I feel like when we use them at our school, the kids kind of wean themselves off because it takes so much longer for them to get the tiles out and move them around. And do mm -hmm. and after a while, they're just like, what's the shortcut? How can I do this without these? Mm -hmm. like, for them, it's very time consuming and burdensome to try to, or to try to draw them out. Mm -hmm. And I would say even not being an elementary teacher, but even at the elementary level, you might be able to say, Oh my goodness, I forgot them today. What do we do? Like, we mm -hmm. have been using them. Does anybody have an idea for how we could do it without having them here? Mm -hmm. And sort of see if you can get them more to want to read themselves from it. Anybody else? I match up the symbol with what we did with the tile. Mm -hmm. So, if we had x plus 3 is negative 5, and we had to put, you know, <coughs> negative 3 in there, I write mm -hmm. if there was a negative and that's good practice to, to connect the symbol to yeah to connect notation the with the tile absolutely that's good stuff another option would be to give them problems that are not easy to model using algebra tiles if a kid wants to use an algebra tile all the time switch them give them a, give them give them a fractional coefficient in some way or give them numbers that are too large because you don't have enough algebra tiles, so solving something like 5x plus 23 equals 76 is going to be a problem. Like, that's an issue. And it forces them to move away from the thing that they're leaning on as a crutch. And that's the same thing I tell elementary teachers. Just extend the number range before you force them into something more abstract. Anybody else have a last closing comment? Because I'm done after this. I wanted to give you guys time to work on your implementation guides and the survey that you're supposed to take. <coughs> going once, going twice. Sold to the lady in the pink hat. Thank you all very much, and good luck on those things. If you need my help, I will be around. And thank you for putting those back in the bag so I can actually like leave on time now. So you're doing the implementation guide, and then there's always a, I believe there was a survey. I don't know if that's correct. That, that might be the wrong. It would be D3. Yes. I apologize. I didn't change this slide. No. You did the A. This will be the feedback for me and, for me and Mike. Yes. Change it. Change it. Change that to D3, please. I apologize. And that is feedback that Mike and I get. So by all means, be honest, and we do our best to take into account your feedback every time.